Hi everybody and welcome to TFT Tarot for Today, Divine Dabblings with Banshee and me, Oberon. And this is my Outlook on the Emotional Exchanges, which is my weekly one-card pool for each sign of the Zodiac in order to see what kind of relationships, love affairs, situations of the heart are coming for you in the week ahead. And of course that week is today... Friday the 25th, and this reading goes through next Thursday, March 1st. All right, so to do that, we have a collective card for, for everyone. The collective poll is taken from the Enchanted Tarot by Amy Zerner and Monty Farber. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And this is just for everybody to kind of set the tone for how we're doing things here. All right, so just going to shuffle these up a little. Give them a riffle. And I hope everybody's doing okay today. We had the momentous uh, Pluto returning uh, to the USA's uh, NATO chart, the Pluto return, like every 240, 249 years. Awesome. All right, so. What is our collective card for this reading? And it's the King of Pentacles. With the King's self-discipline and a solid sense of purpose, you will achieve success in your material affairs. Try to interact instinctively with all you meet and do not be confused by wealth or station in life. Maintain your ties to the natural world because this will fortify you in your dealings. Be aware that the appearance of the King of Pentacles in a reading may mean that a person with his qualities will soon be appearing in your life. And of course, we like to take whatever the card is and kind of apply it to your emotional life, to the sense of who you love or who your best friends are or the kind of uh, pleasant in exchanges that you normally would expect. Uh, so let's just say that this is a person maybe who advances or supports you uh, in your emotional life with the determination of somebody who feels they're <clears throat> there to achieve success for you on other levels as well. So now, uh, that was a reading from uh, Zerner Farber's actual handbook on the Enchanted Tarot. I'm also going to read The Enchantment, which is a kind of affirmation, or perhaps it's a spell, depending, uh, that you can do for yourself, uh, all of you. And it's not too hard. Uh, just listen to this. Reward yourself by visiting either a botanical garden or a florist shop. Look around at all the beautiful plants and flowers. Think about the faraway places that they have traveled from. Admire their diverse shapes and colors. Pick one out for yourself. If you can, purchase a small pine tree to plant somewhere as it is evergreen and thus represents everlasting life. And of course, I would say, like, maybe throw, you know, some red ribbon on there for the idea of the emotional exchange. Okay, so that was our collective reading, and now we're going to go ahead and get started with our normal, regular reading for the signs of the zodiac. And as I mentioned, this is a one-card pull, and I use the, uh, the final rose tarot, this beautiful tarot that I recently uh, received as a gift from my wife. And uh, it's kind of kitschy in the sense that it's based on some of the uh, concepts around uh, one of the dating games, the Bachelor, Bachelorette game. I think the game is actually called The Final Rose uh, because there's a, a set of roses that appear in the various uh, parts of the show. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this reading. And like I said, it's a one card poll, so we're going to get started right now. First up 
is Aries. And we're just going to read them straight up from the single um, pile that I have created with all my appropriate shuffling and cutting. So, Aries, first up. And Aries has the Page of Roses, and that would be the Page of Wands. Underneath it says the Free Spirit. And of course, that's probably a pretty good card for uh, Aries. Uh, it's a fire card, and I think what this is saying is that maybe messages will be coming to you about someone you really care about, and uh, there may be the sense of they're moving into a new adventure, and maybe possibly they want to include you with that. Wouldn't that be fun? So then we move to Taurus, and Taurus has the Knight of Mirrors. And the Knight of Mirrors, that would be the Knight of Swords, the Meathead. So, Taurus, slow down a little bit. Uh, if you're trying to move quicker into a new relationship or to a new set of relationships, it may be that your timing is not going to work as well as you think. You may come across as being desperate or clumsy. So, slow down with new approaches to relationships, or even if you're having uh, situations with your relationships, your friends, whatever like that, um, pace yourself. Don't be the person who's always pushy. And then we have Gemini. And Gemini has the Three of Rings, that's the Three of Pentacles. the influencer. And I think with the Three of Pentacles, this is kind of like team action. So I think this is same for Gemini. You maybe feel that in the nature of your relationships, you kind of lead the way in teamwork in a sense. And I'm not talking about, you know, going on multiple dating, you know, or couple dates or, you know, group dates or things like that. I'm actually talking about maybe the idea that you are able to uh, influence others to be their better, their better self, Gemini. Maybe you teach them things either or model things for them that maybe show them how the value of looking at collaborative relationships within primary or otherwise. Kind of a lot there. So then on to um, Cancer. And Cancer has the reversed Five of Wands. Wrestlers. Competition. So perhaps Cancers may find that they're feeling there's competition or there's a certain level of, of putting yourself really into the game uh, in terms of relationships for you at this point. It may be relationships you're trying to work on. You may feel that maybe uh, the person you really want is going to be some hard work, not necessarily because of them, but because they are sought after. And this kind of competition usually sort of doesn't work out for, for everybody. Somebody clearly will be a loser. Okay, uh, on to Leo. And Leo, you know, you are the sun, so therefore... You get the moon. You get Major Arcana 18, the moon. And there's not much more to say about this, Leo, other than the fact that maybe uh, some real romance, some real attraction, uh, something, you know, destiny, mysterious, and very sexy or romantic is coming to you. Okay, and then we're going to move from Leo to Virgo. And Virgo has the reversed King of Flutes. That's the King of Cups. Oh, poor Virgo. The singles bar. And, of course, it's reversed. So, well, I think this is not the greatest week for Virgo in terms of relationships. It may very well be that we're sulking a little bit. Or uh, we're sulking maybe because our relationship is having some floundery moments here. So it may be that this is the time for you to pay attention to some clues and or put on um, your nicest, nicest uh, behavior. 
with someone you care about. So then we move on to Libra. And Libra has strength, or maybe it's justice, I never know for sure. It says uh, Major Arcana 8, and you know, they always flip around. But it says opening up, and it's reversed. So opening up is reversed. And I think that this is the strength card. Uh, and so I think that this is saying really, um, for Libra, we have to be careful that we are not being too forceful, that sometimes as Libras, we maybe have a way of rationalizing things and seeing sort of a, a an equivalency that maybe only we see and that other people might not understand. And that's not to say that we're wrong, Libras. It just may say that uh, our thinking sometimes is challenging to others. And so in the course of friendships, love relationships this week, you may want to try the gentler approach rather than the logical approach or any other approach. And now we move to Scorpio, my own sign. Scorpio, reversed two of pentacles. Reversed two of pentacles. And it says the final two. Well, um, it sort of feels like judgment. It sort of feels like maybe balance issues for sure. Uh, Two of Pentacles reverse may be indicating that we really are having a harder time this week balancing our emotional life with mostly everything else in our life. I have a feeling that Scorpios just have a uh, big emotionality this week. Uh, things are hurting. Things are exciting. Things are anxious. And we need to keep control. Scorpios, I know you can do it. And then we move to Sagittarius. And Sagittarius has uh, two, which is the High Priestess. No, I'm sorry. It's 20, which is Judgment. <laughs> the Rose Ceremony, only it's reversed. Sagittarians, I'm wondering if maybe uh, we're wondering very much about what's going on in our love lives. Maybe we've had some sort of big challenge there. Maybe there's a situation happening. Maybe we are on the brink of breaking up a marriage, a strong relationship, or a strong friendship or partnership. So there's a lot here to try to pierce together Sagittarians. I'm wondering really uh, what is going on here. It seems to me like uh, you need to make some changes in terms of how you really are looking at the relationship. It may be that you're not grasping the same things as the other people are. You may not be on the same page with each other. It's not clear to say that this is all your fault or if it's communication or something else. Sagittarians, Capricorn. The reverse seven of rings. It says, for the right reasons. Well, seven of rings is seven of pentacles. And when it's reversed, I think that this is saying really for Capricorns, now is the time to maybe um, make some movements. Maybe we've been just sort of enjoying things, but we haven't really seen ourselves moving to any kind of uh, completion, consummation, uh, end object of any sort. And now I think uh, for Capricorns, if it's one particular relationship, that may be about to change. You may be feeling that if you don't move, uh, make moves soon, maybe you've been quietly admiring somebody and they're about to be admired by somebody else. So it may be time to come up with a plan. Capricorns, we move to Aquarius. And Aquarius gets the uh, Page of Swords, you're called the Page of Mirrors, the Gossip. So, Page of Swords, well, you know, they're a little flamboyant, so it could be that this is about a gossipy situation, uh, Aquarians. It may be that this is saying this could be a role you play, that maybe you're being the dancer around um, tact and diplomacy, so maybe a little bit of both. I mean, I think that's what this is saying. Normally, I like to see the upright 
page here as being somebody who's responsible and who's trying to do right things, but there is a little bit of that flirtatiousness there, that gossipiness, and so it could be that we're using our vaunted uh, communication skills, Aquarians, uh, to maybe uh, advance ourselves, uh, and maybe we're doing it in a little bit of a playful way, but there could be, you know, some feelings hurt, so watch out for that. And then finally, we close with Pisces, and Pisces gets the Ace of Pentacles, upright, red, fresh meat, fresh meat. So I think Pisces is about to realize that maybe it's starting all over again. Uh, an undertaking uh, in uh, a relationship that maybe Pisces, uh, you're feeling the movement of the various things going on in the heavens or just the encouragement from life around you. And you're going to be moving towards that fresh meat. <coughs> you're going to be taking a move towards love. So that's what I have for uh, Oberon's Outlook on the Emotional Exchanges. And this was the uh, final show for February, meaning uh, the Super Tarot Love Month uh, Fun or whatever it was, uh, will be going away for another year. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to uh, continue to use the Final Rose Tarot uh, for my readings here, uh, because I think it's a really great card. I may swap it out from time to time with some other cards. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for our, our stuff. And later on tonight, do check out our <clears throat> Love of Your Past Life. Uh, a special pop-up reincarnation on past loves, past lives for everybody. We're just going to pull a few cards and see if we can determine what was the significant relationship of your life. Or maybe we'll find out if we will have an opportunity to meet that person again in this life or another life. And as always, there's happy hour on Saturdays. Our uh, materials Matters with Banshee on Sunday mornings at 10, and then our live stream again at 2 p.m. So take care, everybody, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.